Um, just gonna pop in and say welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, today we're here. Um, really, I'm gonna just let Jordan and Evan lead this today. Um, but we're here to talk with them about Main Street Not Shopping. It's um, a mobile platform for businesses to be able to sell. And I'm excited to see what they have to offer. I think that that it's going to be pretty interesting and it's definitely something that would probably be useful in these times. So I hope you all enjoy. Cool. And thank you again for lunch and for being here. Oh, yes, yes. And our pleasure to be a part of this. Um, and Evan, you just want to introduce yourself uh, and your, your role here with Honeycomb and then I'll jump in and kind of probably never end rambling. <laughs> yeah, so as Jordan mentioned, I've been um, his counterpart for the better part of two and a half years on and off. And I know a lot of you, a lot of the people in here um, probably know me from other places um, around town. Very much a person about the village. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping we can uh, combine those two roles and possibly help some small businesses um, around the community, yeah. Cool. Well, I am Jordan Gray. I'm um, probably been to the village here. If some of you may, may not know me, um, been around for maybe seven years, came in, um, me and my uh, mea, mea spousa, uh, Bethany Gray. Uh, she's over at the Glen Helen Association, uh, right now currently the chair of that um, board and so forth. And uh, we've been busy with our own activities with this company, Honeycomb Archive. It's um, it's a long journey of a company. I've, I, I've been working with all of this technology for 20 years that we are, uh, that's on un, the underbelly of the system. And um, I was a partner owning the company. Then we sold it during the rough, some rough years. Um, and then I just bought it back January 1 of 2020, right in time for COVID. Yay. Um, so, um, but uh, we have basically um, picked up a particular customer that wanted to build a new type of social media uh, slash e-commerce slash everything interaction builder um, tool that would allow people to communicate more easily instead of having to go into a separate app for every single thing you want to do. Like if you want to chat, you go over here. If you want to shop, you go over here. If you want to post pictures like Instagram style, you will go over here. And we've kind of like cherry picked some of the best functionalities. We've, uh, Evan and I have spent an inordinate amount of time working on policies and privacy and security. And so that we're cultivating like real shoppers, real people with their phones validated. Um, two factor, if you're familiar with how you kind of get into your bank, you have to kind of, it's a very official uh, authentication process. And the vendors, we check vendors out to make sure that they are a real bona fide company. So we're trying to create a more trusted space. Um, and um, and uh, we're even running right now at this very moment with the OSU Battelle Center for Science and Technology and Public Policy with the John Glenn College of, uh, I can't even remember the full name, but we've got a group of students, senior students that are researching the boundary between people's rights to digital privacy and um, the government's responsibility, their duty of care, fiduciary responsibility to protect the citizenry. Um, you know, we have, anyway, I won't get into more of that, but right now, like we're so actively engaged with that. Evan's helping me work with and shepherd those students through. They have like a two-star general that's mentoring them through the question process. It's a pretty intense little uh, project that they're doing, but all that information is gonna inform how we um, uh, 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 would be um, providing information uh, to people, uh, providing uh, products to people, connecting them with other people. We wanna make sure that's a trusted space. Um, and then just a little housekeeping. Um, if you guys uh, did want to uh, drop in a question, you can do that in the chat or in the Q&A area or uh, we're gonna get to a point where we're gonna turn on everybody's uh, microphone and um, we're gonna allow you to ask questions live if you prefer to do it vocally. So uh, we'll, we'll get to that there in a second. Um, but um, I, I did wanna also say real quick at the outset that I, we blame um, the Chamber of Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce for starting us on this project. 
because Karen, um, bless her heart, she's no longer here, but she was stirring the pot before Alex. And she said, Jordan, what can you do to help small business? And this was back in March, you know, of last year. And I said, we can do something, but, and, and um, she was checking in and so forth. And I said, I can't talk about it yet because we don't want to give any false hope. We don't want to say we have something, but it's really not there. Um, we don't want to lead people on, make them think that something's going to come about, but we can't deliver it. So we've been quiet all year on this topic until maybe mid-year, we started doing a few tests, um, Flying Mouse Farms. Uh, we set them up, showed their, their um, syrup, made my purchase, and I had my syrup on my front door within hours. I was feeling very fortunate. So we, we've done a lot of testing. We've done real thousands of dollars of transactions through this. We have leading a few leading um, uh, businesses that are selling more than others and competing for top uh, transactions. Um, now it's, um, we're focused on trying to help local dollars get to local businesses. And, um, and what I'm gonna do is, is pop open a screen if that's okay. And you're gonna see the screen pop up. You should be able to see that. Um, and um, I'm just gonna show, um, you know, the, the familiar signs of business uh, in 2020, trying to pivot. Okay, we're going to offer takeout. We're going to offer delivery. We're going we're gonna to do all those things. But the problem is all the stores down, even in our town, have different digital scattered presence. So someone might have their website over here. Someone else might be selling on Facebook. Someone might be, but they're not all grouped together. So if there's one thing to kind of learn about what we're promoting today, it is that groupings of stores really work well for the customer. And it also is a big benefit to the vendor as well. Um, but a lot of small, smaller vendors, smaller business, medium-sized business, um, you know, unless you have a, um, a, a kind of an opportunity to group up, you're usually on your own, trying to build your own website, your own e-commerce, your own marketing to because nobody comes to your website automatically it's uh it's it's you know have, bring your own customers in once you build it you still have to market it you still have to spend a lot of money um to do that um pay-per-click or other marketing um but anyway uh we believe that there's an opportunity and uh with what we're doing and we are literally dropping um like digital pins where your stores are located and people can find those stores from the comfort of their own home if they're not going out as much during COVID. Maybe they're going out half as much or a quarter as much, but that definitely clobbers foot traffic, that clobbers that interaction, the visibility, the rapport that you can build with, with people. Um, so if you were to take a look, this is kind of um, something I wanted to say that even during, um, uh, COVID, you know, Amazon did not struggle to get sales. <laughs> they, that's because they've been doing this for 26 years. They started in 2004 selling books and CDs. I kind of got involved with the dot-com selling larger ticket items like $500 and up around 1999. And, uh, and I cut my teeth selling medical equipment and building a system where I kind of ran all the different parts of it, I built tools for, for the customer service. We built tools for people to shop and get confident in their purchase. We built all those things. So I've kind of been immersed in not just that project 20 years ago, but several other e-commerce projects since, and now this one. So the reason why I'm kind of laying that out is trying to just do a quick little bio of why I'm even in this space like I thought Jordan was a therapist sometimes up at the hospital because I am, but I'm not right now. Uh, I stopped doing any therapy up there a while ago, but um, I do have uh, uh, this kind of experience that I've stitched together. And we were looking at Amazon back in 2001 to put our products from our website onto them, but they wanted 30% of our sales. And they still kind of want some high percentages. If you go to sell.amazon.com, you can see all the categories of products that are sold through them. And there's a monthly fee, there's a per sale fee, and there's also a referral fee 
for each kind of item, um, as high as 10, 20, 30, 40%, depending on what you're selling. Which during a pandemic, that much roadblock to money, that's like having a business partner that isn't, you know, maybe they've kind of done something to help facilitate um, some of your marketing or whatever, but they're taking a big chunk of your money. Um, so we set out to set up our platform with a ridiculously low platform fee, flat rate, 2%. So there's a credit card fee, like normal credit card processing, and then there's 2% that helps protect the thing that we are building, which we will be showing you more of. Um, but um, I just, I wanted, I was going to draw a picture here, but, um, and, and maybe I will do it just for kicks, if you guys don't mind. Um, one second. Well, what did I do with my pen, my fancy pen? Um, uh, Nick is out there saying he knows what I'm thinking. I'm looking for my Wacom tablet pen. Uh, one second. No, I don't have it. Okay. If I would draw a picture, I would draw storefronts and the storefronts are intermittently closed. And, um, you know, you have different staffing problems. How many people can you get in? Maybe the store owner's running everything and they have to take a break. Um, maybe there's only a certain number of people that can go in the store. And the diagram was just money trying to get in the doors and then it finds its way to Amazon. Because if someone's gonna make a purchase, they have to make a purchase, they're critical, they can't find it locally, they can't get to the digital uh, store or into the physical store, uh, the money's gonna flow somewhere. So that was just, that was that diagram. But if, if we were to visualize what this looks like, this is kind of an artist rendition of, of how this lays out but you're actually dropping these uh, objects on the map that can show up if you've ever seen um, what they call as um, augmented reality. You can take your phone and you can look and see the world around you, but you can see an object floating in it. That's, that's what they call this augmented reality thing. And there is a feature of that that's kind of cool that relates, but we're not gonna focus on that part right now. The main thing is that you drop a pin where your business is. <clears throat> now you can also say like Flying Mouse Farm doesn't want to pin at their location. They just want to select Yellow Springs as an area for their business. And that's fine too. So you can literally have a specifically marked place that people can navigate to because it will automatically route people on their maps to you. Um, or, um, it, and, uh, or you can just do a general uh, direction, a general location. Um, now, if it was just a listing of businesses that we're providing and a way to get to these locations, that's kind of un, unimpressive, like big deal. It's a business listing, right? Um, but when we get a little bit more into what happens, I'm going to show you, you guys are probably familiar with Pfeiffer, everybody here. I, I um, brought up the map view on the right side. I kind of have a crop of it where the map is at the top and you have a listing of all the stores that are near you and the distances to them. So you can actually see well, how far is um, the Yellow Springs Chamber of Commerce? Well, when I was standing over at, uh, at Pfeiffer, that was about one kilometer away from where I was. Now you can change it to miles or, or you can do it, you know, uh, the, the, the metric, uh, imperial or metric. Um, so, when I went over to Pfeiffer, I just, I just revealed like an augmented reality. I pushed a button and it popped up this object right in front of Pfeiffer's because that's what that object um, is tied to. And if I click on that object, it would bring me into the store of products on the phone and I can actually buy products without ever walking into the store. So inside of that box, you can literally pack an entire business all of your products, hundreds of products. Right now we're kind of gearing for people to put up to 50, just, just to kind of understand how everything works. Um, and, um, and there's all kinds of variations on products, which we'll get into in a moment. But I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the app. So this is like, if you open up the app and I've, we've got it for Android and iOS, whoops, Android and iOS and um, uh, this, this is a, a video clip where I click on, on just this Main Street button and um, I'll go into that area of Main Street where all the businesses are listed and you can search 
by name. So if I wanted to search Pfeiffer, I can quickly find the business I'm looking for and I'm on it. So it's pretty darn quick to get to where you're going and you can kind of scroll through, you can use the tags, you can see the products. Now we were testing some stuff with them. They were kind enough to let us come on site and shoot some photos of some products and we were prepping things for them, but um, things got very busy for them and then they shut down you know, seasonally. So what's nice about this system too, is you can put your catalog out there, hang your business shingle, your contact info, and you can just disable the, the shopping part of it. You don't, you don't have to make it so that people are transacting if you're seasonal or if you're out of a particular item or two, you can turn off whatever is not available. It's very kind of uh, familiar and easy. Like it makes sense to people if they see that, like, oh, those are not available. Um, now, if I, let me see if I, um, yeah, so you can filter it down to just certain things that are tagged and we will show and guide anyone that wants to try this out between me and Evan. Um, and we have a, another larger team available if we can't handle the load um, that we, we will help you get onboarded with a few sample products just to see what it's like. And um, uh, right now there are three types of businesses that we are gearing for. We're presently in the phase where we're onboarding product type companies, companies that have products that are physical goods that um, have maybe some variations, like even like t-shirts with different sizes and different prices on sizes. That's pretty, that's pretty advanced uh, for our first rollout. The second phase that we're tiptoeing into right now is food service. So if someone is listening in that's kind of in the food service genre, we actually could start conversations right now, but we're hardening those tools over the next 30 days. So food service is kind of secondarily getting ready to launch. And third in line is service companies, which those folks are, they can still set up their business here. and not gonna pay anything to get listed, to be in the system, to be part of the Yellow Springs kind of community of businesses that are inside of Main Street. Um, but the businesses can list themselves and still have all their contact information um, and be able to communicate uh, with some of the tools that are in here and we'll, we'll share more. So um, just wanted to mention that part. So if you don't know the business by name, you can also search by category. And I'm just gonna play that one. So if I go in, this is just an example. You type, you can, you can hit like a category um, and say food and beverage. And you can also filter that list down to see who does local delivery, who does shipping. It's really fast and it does require the user, you know, to, um, to mark, you know, what they're, uh, if they offer free shipping, if they offer delivery, what those costs are. But once you set those things up, unless you want to change them suddenly and turn them off, there's nothing to do after you've set them up. Um, they're just kind of, those are the settings. Um, so this is a particular one of the businesses that came on very early and I'm, I'm a little bit of a glutton. I've, I've probably ordered three times from them and three bags each time. So, um, but they've got very good um, um, tur uh, jerky and so forth, um, but uh, they're out of New Jersey. Um, so it does have the ability in our system to also augment local sales with shipping. So if there's something that you have that's unique that someone might be able to buy or people that normally come to Yellow Springs, which there's a gazillion people, if you wanna allow them to buy something from your store and you do offer, let's say FedEx or UPS uh, shipping, we're gonna be adding USPS in the coming period of time. I don't have a timeline for it, but right now UPS and FedEx um, and UPS has the ability to attach um, SurePost. So some of you guys are familiar with UPS's version called SurePost. They get a little bit more competitive with flat rate type, smaller, you know, targeted price, like a, like a, a 10 pound kind of a flat rate um, kind of a thing at a lower price. Um, but I wanted to mention um, that in conjunction with this because not only would you be able to provide these available to people that are locally um, tracking on this, but also someone that, that knows about your shop, loves your shop, misses coming and wants to buy something from you. 
uh, shipping is also an option. Um, and so from the perspective of someone who wanted to come to Yellow Springs, their phone would open up to wherever they are. So if they're over in Worthington, Ohio, or if they're up in Cleveland, they can teleport to Yellow Springs. So that's a kind of a cool feature that we've built in where you can literally click and press uh, a long press on the map and it, boom, it shifts your attention over to Yellow Springs and then it blossoms and shows you all of the businesses that are there. And I'll show you a video clip of what that looks like. Um, I'm pressed onto Dublin and then I, boom, I brought up all the businesses that are listed in Dublin. Now, these are not businesses that we are working with yet. These are placeholder names of companies with their associated published phone. And these are businesses waiting to be claimed in, in Dublin uh, because I'm looking at um, just listings in general. Um, but I can find that uh, listing and I can claim it if it's already listed. So it's possible, uh, Evan actually um, uh, found, um, uh, you know, made sure that we had all the names of everyone that, that came today. We can make sure that you can claim your business uh, just by clicking on it. And then it'll, the robot will call your office, uh, your, your published phone number. You punch in the code into your app because you'll have the ArcNet app to do this. You punch in the code that it calls you and gives you, and then you will have your business set up that quickly. There's more to do in configuring it, but that's that gets that gets kind of gets the shingle hung, if that makes sense. Um, so and I'll just you can do with Google. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this will just happen all real time while you're on the app and you find the business. So we'll make sure you guys are listed so you can do that. And I'll show you what that looks like because I just went into Dublin in this video and I stopped the video, but I'm gonna continue the video and show that if you start typing like Java, it filters it down to the one thing that's there that has the word Java in it. So I found it and now I can claim it. So I can click that button and it will actually dial me. It'll give me a place to put in a code. Now. That's probably more than you guys want to know right now, but I just wanted to mention that that's a pathway for getting engaged and at least getting your, your business shingle um, hung inside of Main Street. We do have, uh, we've added Spanish um, uh, and we're going to be adding more languages in the future as well, but Spanish obviously is the first one we're starting with. Um, what does this cost? All this, all these steak knives and, and what do we, you know, how much does this cost? Um, there's no cost for the app, iOS or Android. There's no setup fee to do this, and there's no monthly fee. So anyone that wanted to just get their business listed, if you're watching a kind of semi-interesting Netflix, you could probably set up your business. I'm just I'm saying you could do it while while you're watching something that's boring. <laughs> um, it would be pretty pretty darn quick. Um, now, once you start listing products and selling them. Um, we do have the credit card fees. You can't escape credit card fees, obviously. And there's a 30 cents per transaction. There's a 2.9%. Um, and then there's this 2% fee that we would collect for the platform. Um, and um, we, are, we are trying to also give money back to the communities that are participating. Um, and um, we will be routing back a small tiny percent of our amount uh, back to the chamber to help them grow this even further. Um, maybe help answer questions, get more people on board, get the community engaged. Um, but we want to we want to make sure. So there's not any additional charge uh, for the chamber to get some additional support back to them. That comes out of our extremely low two percent platform fee. We we will actually cut that back to the to the local chamber or to a, a group that's helping sponsor this. So I'm gonna actually pause and take a breath, Jordan. Um, it's 12:30, um, but what I wanted to do is 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 probe uh, what kind of questions that you guys might have, and I'm perfectly glad to also pop open the audio so that people can actually ask audio questions. Um, and and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and and start turning on people's. Um, uh, phone uh, audio option, and you don't have to speak 
but I'm, I'm slowly turning everybody on here that uh, should be able to activate their mic if they should so choose. Um, and I wanna, just one second, I think I've got everybody now uh, activated. So if someone would like to type in a question in the Q&A, if that's the preferred method, go for it. Otherwise, if you un unmute yourself, it, I'm sure everybody's somewhat semi familiar with Zoom by now. Laura. Yeah. Are you thinking about it? Uh, well, I'm with John Fijamara and he has a startup business uh, for retail products, export import, export, import with uh, West African products. And he's here, I'll let him speak. Sure, sure, sure. So I was gonna pay a young tech savvy person to do exactly this. But, uh, so uh, I think I still will, it's just to support young local tech savvy people. Uh, it looks like, this is something can be set up in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, and we've been criticized for that, actually, <laughs> because um, that, you know, uh, there are some research things out there where people who kind of set up e-commerce shops and they make it available that they're doing all kinds of fraudulent stuff. And um, our system um, is, is something <laughs> that we are curating like our businesses that come in, the users that come in, the things that they post, um, nothing gets posted publicly unless it goes through a user-generated content approval. So nobody's gonna be posting, hey, I'm selling a live animal or hey, I'm selling a kidney. Um, so we, we, are, we are trying to watch very carefully um, to make sure that the fact that you can do it within uh, minutes and not hours uh, is it is a remarkable thing, but I can tell you that from my own experience, and I, I am an occupational therapist, and with some of the things that we study as therapists for mental health is uh, frustration tolerance. And frustration tolerance is really the thing, the barrier between people adopting your digital tool or not adopting it. And that goes for vendors as well as customers. So. I'm while I'm building this stuff and I'm a bit of a geek in the tech stuff and Evan and I are thinking through everything kind of on a, a policy level and on an ease of use level. We're constantly thinking about will people do this and is this the easiest path and and we're trying to kind of make that that process like super easy um, for even newbies that have never set up e commerce or a business that has tried to do e-commerce with multiple um, website developers, but they've never gotten it right, or they've never quite executed and been able to add the shipping right or whatever. We're building all that infrastructure, you know, the ability to add um, items that are complex with configurable choices, with price differences, that's all available for free. Um, when I started this journey, if I mentioned back in 2020, I'm uh, sorry, 2020, 2000, uh, 20 years ago, um, you know, buying a, um, a configurator shopping system to sell a complex number of items was a million dollars, like a system called Calico. You'd have to spend an inordinate amount of money to get this. But here, 20 years later, we've built it. We probably spent easily close to that in the last year, year, two years, probably the underlying infrastructure. And we're literally providing it for free. Um, obviously, we want people to engage it, use it, but it's only going to make us money with you at that small rate if you're successful. So we have a lot of reasons to make this reliable, consistent. And, um, you know, it would take a community effort to kind of get um, like Yellow Spring saturated with enough businesses that kind of makes it like intriguing for customers to be like, yeah, I'll get on there. I can put in my credit card one time and I can shop Mary Kay's wines and well, we're not going to do the wines there, but like products from Mary Kay uh, over there on uh, and the wine shop. Um, or, you know, I can also jump over to another shop and buy something maybe from the um, uh, Rosen Sal's, um, you know, with this using the same exact credit card, 
it kind of makes it easier because it's also a little bit more secure not to have to bring your credit card out every time and enter it into a different website, into a different platform. You're kind of adding more exposure every time you, you insert your card in more places. Um, so anyway, that was a ramble. That's and of course the COVID safety factor there. What, what's that? Of course the COVID safety factor there of not having to have those in-person transactions or not have to take out your card and hand it to somebody, et cetera. Yeah, contactless, exactly right. Um, I, can I can tell you now, this is just what uh, I've been waiting for. So cool. it, it, it looks, but it's, it seems like it's a reciprocation. The, my, the success of the business will depend on um, Main Street shopping success of being out in the marketplace. Yes, and that kind of relates to Philip's questions, like what are the efforts to getting people on board to download this app and to find these businesses? Um, we are kind of starting in earnest here in this year. Uh, we kind of packed in all of the key functionalities up until like December 15th, and then we tried to take a break over the holidays. Um, but uh, we're kind of going at it gangbusters. Right now we're working a list of 6,500 chambers across the entire US. And we, like right after this call, Evan and I will be jumping in and um, I have to be careful because it's uh, at, at one o'clock I have to hop to a chamber specific meeting where we have multiple chambers coming in. And those are our real connections to just like you all are part of the Yellow Springs Chamber. We want to introduce ourselves through a trusted connection where, where the chamber knows you and we're not just adding willy-nilly anyone from anywhere. Uh, we're really trying to focus on trying to get some real trusted. So we're trying to do it in splotches around the country um, and get these different communities online. It'll first help the local community. Once you have enough people in town doing this, um, then you have a kind of a critical tipping point where it actually starts getting some momentum and you actually have uh, some spread of that utility of that tool and how easy it is. People want to tell people about things that are actually easy and actually make sense. And we hope that we've built that and we're continuing to improve on it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I see another question and I see um, uh, Julia, Julia is out there and I saw your mic is on. Did you want to ask a question, Julia? And if not, it might be that her mic is just, Julia, your mic is just turned on, no biggie. Um, so there's another question here. I am here from the Arts Council. Thank you, Holly. Uh, we are interested in this for local artists use. Uh, uh, they will be on their own, not going through us. Would that be possible? Yes, each business can set up their own uh, setup. And right now inside of our system, like I, like I went out to our farmer's market on on saturday many many weeks ago and told uh, jay's peppers about it and um and then i didn't go for a couple weeks and i came back and he says oh good you're here can we get set up and so i went over to him and inside of an hour i set him up entirely now i was facilitating that but i set him up entirely and loaded like six products i took photos of six of his products i priced them all according to his prices um, and then I actually made a couple purchases right there. <laughs> so I, I, it's, it's very easy to get set up. Um, so even a small um, uh, individual company, you know, setting up their e-commerce uh, connection for payouts, it is through Stripe. If you're familiar with Stripe, Stripe Connect is what we're using because we, Main Street, are acting as a platform. So the money comes in and within 48 hours, you have a, a, a view on the app that you can see the payouts that are coming in. Um, and Nick, yes, there's a version, an output version for the web coming as well. Um, uh, good question. Um, let me, um, yes, uh, we will be going international. There is a question that Laura is conveying. Um, and I don't know how to pronounce the name, but if someone can tell me how to pronounce it, I don't want to mispronounce. It's with a J, Jamfi. Jamfi, okay, cool. I'm dyslexic, so I had no chance. Um, 
Um, so thank you. Um, but yeah, we will be going international, but um, the fact that we're only in the US is kind of, kind of testament to how carefully we're trying to roll out. We will be rolling out to Canada and Australia next, but we're not gonna be doing that until um, we have all of our, um, un there's a lot of different privacy laws. There's even restrictions coming in in Australia right now. They're getting very tough with how some of these social platforms are just harvesting and using other people's um, uh, posts and media. So there's, there's a lot of issues that we have to juggle uh, before we can roll into another country, but yeah. Um, and let's see here, how will this work for services business? Great question, Laura. Um, it seems like it would benefit, uh, yes. It's great for everybody to kind of participate, um, but I will explain that services are coming third in line um, after the food service folks. So regular service companies and service companies will probably be more driven towards getting leads. And so they wouldn't be paying like 2% of their services. We wouldn't be doing that. We would just kind of come up with a probably a lead cost and that might vary based on your industry. Uh, so you might have a very affordable and and I'm I, I hate to it's 42 after 12 boy I'm hoping that we could probably do a follow up additional meeting for any additional questions but I think we're going to burn through all of our time here but I do want to say. Um, uh, that uh, I've worked with a lot of these small companies that go out to market themselves and to try to get leads and if you go and you're let's say you're selling remodeling of. Uh, you're trying to sell windows or you're trying to sell bathroom remodeling or whatever. Um, those leads are pretty darn expensive when you try to get those leads. And if you try to market for them on Google or other places, you could still spend an inordinate amount of money. And you, it, it's uh, the, the prices compared to when I started back 20 years ago, where you could buy things much cheaper and you could find uh, a click that would come to you for a penny at times, uh, you could run a business off of that. But some of these folks, you know, to get a click, you might have to be paying five, 10, 15, 20, $30 a click. And there's no guarantee that you're gonna get a sale from that. So um, we'll talk more about marketing later and I'm, Philip's on the call here. I'm sure he could also help answer questions on some of the grueling nature of marketing out there. I'm going to go back real quickly to um, the, the spread, the, the, the document here. And um, I'm just going to mention a few of these things um, about activating, deactivating products, changing prices. Um, you can also specify some of your items are, are available for local pickup, for local delivery or store pickup, but you can control which one doesn't get picked up or which one doesn't get delivered or which one has an extra dollar charge for delivery and you know, above your base rate or which one, like say you're selling mulch, you know, maybe it's an extra dollar a bag to have it um, even picked up because someone has to haul that out, prepare your order or whatever it is. Um, and I'm just making that up. But, um, and so every single product that's in the system You've got photos associated with that product, video clip that you can associate, a 3D object, which we'll explain a little bit more about. But now here is sneak peek into the actual app itself. When you go to look at your dashboard, you can see your orders. You can see through the Stripe dashboard, the money that's coming in. Uh, it shows you on the next sub, I just have a quick snapshot here, but uh, I do go down the path of the orders where if you click on the orders, You'll get a view, a visualization of orders that are coming in, whether they are for store pickup or whether they're for shipping, and you can move them through the statuses. And every time you change the status, the customer is notified. Otherwise, they're gonna keep calling you, asking you like, hey, when's my order coming? As soon as you move it, it tells them, hey, it's out for delivery, or hey, we just, we just accepted your order. Um, and here's an interesting view that shows at the bottom of the, every receipt, because the receipt is above this part on the right side, uh, just kind of down to the bottom of it, you can print the order. So if an order comes in, first thing you would do is you'd accept it if you wanted to accept it. Maybe someone just ordered something that's not available 
you don't you could just cancel the order and there's no harm no foul no money leaves the customer's hands you've never taken the order officially so if you do accept it because you know you can fill it you can hit accept and you can mark it in process you could mark it shipped you can you could do ready for pickup you can do a whole bunch of things on the acceptance pathway um, but i want to point out that printer at the top you can print that and you hand it off to a coworker to, to pick that order and to get it ready for pickup potentially or, or shipping. Um, and every single receipt that is generated has an encrypted key that lets you chat with that customer. So you see quick chats. Quick chats, if you click it, you are reaching the customer with one click and you can say, Hey, I saw you ordered seven of these. Are you sure about that? Normally people order one. <laughs> you can just do that. And they can reply and say, yes, yes, I'm buying them for other people, you know, whatever. Uh, and then you can say, okay, just checking. And then you can accept the order. You can actually also as a vendor, initiate a video call to the customer, which is pretty instantaneous. And if I can stop talking for a minute, I would show you actually some of how some of that stuff works. Um, at the very bottom, you can see actually how that number calculates for the credit card fee, uh, the 30 cents that's included in the credit card fee, uh, the 2% uh, platform fee also, all included in that 55 cents. Uh, so that's a small order example, but that's the breakdown. Um, the big thing that I want to make a point of is we have these stickers available that go on your storefront. So to your point, Alex, uh, contactless shopping. Someone could come to your shop and not even walk into your store. Some people are very concerned, especially there's new variants coming out with COVID, things happening, or there's too many people, or it's kind of, maybe there's enough people you could still go in, but you're like, nah, I don't want to go in. Um, you could scan this label at the front door, and if you have the app, that code will bring you right to the actual store itself, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't bring you just to the app. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick for kicks is I'm going to take my phone and scan this um, right on the right on my phone right here, and um, and it, it should go right into ArcNet. One second, and it brought me right to Yellow Springs Chamber because that code is tied to the Yellow Springs Chamber. Um, and so every person that sets up a store in our system and then adds products, we will periodically uh, look and get a list. We'll print some custom vinyl stickers for you and send those out to you. Now, these happen to have like the actual name of your company right underneath it. Um, but um, that's what those are. Um, and I'm not going to go over that page again. There's the two radiuses. You've seen the tags. Um, I was using this as a demonstration to show uh, McGill's a little bit about what we had cooking. Um, these guys are not activated in our system. They've got way too many things going on right now. And um, uh, we're just going to show you, for example, um, I, I just storyboarded this to show like what their tacos look like in there for food service. And if I go and add a um, Let's say if I go to, to add something to my to purchase it, I can select and you can see some of these things are not available because they might be out of certain things. But you can with one hand update which which, which items are available and which ones aren't. Uh, that's good for informing your staff, informing new orders coming in. Um, I don't have it showing in this view right here, but when the food service folks especially they can make it so that you can have a note on every single line item in the checkout. So I can say those tacos, veggie tacos are for Jordan uh, and the Mexican sausage one is for Evan. Um, so the labeling comes with it. Um, and so the pickup and delivery, so you don't have a lot of people touching things and opening and looking, well, what is this one? <laughs> uh, so we're trying to think of everything we can, but we're still listening to the food service group right now. And let's see, um, okay, so that, that concludes like the main core of what we've been talking about. I'm gonna say two more sentences, long hyphenated sentences. Um, 
and say that there are there are the abilities to do three-dimensional renderings of products inside of our app. Um, and simple phones like the Galaxy S20 can do certain types of objects pretty well, like rocks, but it doesn't do well with shiny objects. Um, a lot of scanning doesn't work with shiny objects. But, um, but to get a, you can see how this kind of looks a little weird, maybe a little radioactive potato action because these potatoes are blending together. Um, but um, the scans are still good for representation. So if you were feeling kind of geeky and you wanted to get into adding, maybe in the spring, you can add 3D objects to your products. Our system takes them today. Um, now, in addition to that, we've gone and purchased um, a, a very high-end scanner. And this scanner we use in conjunction with a studio. We have rented studio space at the Little Art. And so what I wanted to mention is, um, is oh, sorry, um, is that this, this particular scanner uh, shot this one. Uh, so you can have furniture, you can have antiques that are for sale. Um, we could scan those items and we can scan up to two objects for free for anyone that wants to work with us. We do have to kind of approve which one we're gonna do for you first. But um, we're kind of, we're kind of um, uh, willing to commit the time to do those scans for free for you and load those into your system. Um, and I'll just show you another example of like how the scanner works is it kind of, we mark the object, we can rotate the object, we can scan and grab all sides of it. And then we, um, uh, cause that's, that's kind of like the scan is kind of picking up all of the dimensions of that um, from every angle. Um, and, uh, and then we go and we, we can clean all that off and then we can export that and put that into ArcNet's Main Street like under the product of your choice. Um, so I, that's what I wanted to kind of share there. Um, I don't know if there are questions at this point because that was a whole bunch more that I dumped out. Um, so oh, Mary Kay has a good question. Uh, uh, what is the notification system for retail items and does food service ordering go through our POS system? Um, I'm gonna answer that second part. We're still kind of tiptoeing into the integrations necessary to handle uh, food service um, and potential integrations. I know that I've walked into many restaurants before and you know, depending on if they're using DoorDash or, or other delivery systems, Uber Eats, they've got a separate iPad for every single service that they're working through. Um, and, and I know that people are, are juggling those things. We have not gotten into the level of integration for the data handoff for food service yet, but that's coming. I'll be smarter on that question in the next 30 days probably. Um, but regarding retail items notification, you would get notifications in the app, uh, like a push notification, if you're familiar with those kind of, like an alert that would come to your phone. Uh, you also get an email, because we want to make sure you get a copy of the, the order had come in by email. Um, and then when you go into the app itself, all those orders are tracked. Um, and uh, at this moment, I don't have a batch dump or a report where maybe at the end of the month, it sends you like a reconciliation of all the orders, but those kinds of things uh, we can add in there as a regular um, job that happens. Great question, Mary Kay. So if, for example, you you could have the app on your phone, but your POS system is in a tablet or an iPad, you could also get that notification on your POS machine while not, you know. Yeah, and I can't comment on how that's going to work until I see it operational on our side, but um, but those kinds of integrations happen and we are well positioned to handle integrations like that. So we're, we're kind of marching into that next, um, but um, kind of getting the product retail side of it off and running is really the, the main mission at the moment. Um, now I know we're, we're kind of closed in on the end of the day here and Evan's gonna have to jump, but I do wanna, instead of me doing any more show and tell, I wanna open back up to the participants here to be able to ask another question direct and, and also know that, um, that you're perfectly entitled to hit me or Evan up after or try to set up a follow-up meeting, like a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we're here to help you, especially if you're interested to kind of get into this. 
Um, so I'll, I'll stop talking so someone else can say something. <laughs> if someone has a question. Um, and there's a hand out there, but I don't see whose hand it is. Um, oh, that, that was Mary Kay had the hand, but that might have been answered for me. Do you, do you have a minute for another question? Yes, go for it. Okay, so um, in, in regards to the retail, and we talked about this a little yesterday, so, you know, there's, say, two or three or four people that work at the wine store in different shifts, so, you know, I, I, I hesitate to put it on people's phones for a notification, so we have an, over there we have a square system, could we download that app so um, the person in the store would see the notification? Um, well, you have a Square system. I think the Square system is a dedicated piece of hardware for Square. It's an app. Okay. You have an iPad that's just got Square installed? Yes. No, no specific. It has other things installed too. So. Okay. Yeah. So as long as it's a tablet that's general purpose with apps, you can totally add that to the to the party. Okay. Yeah. I just worry about, you know, too many people that aren't at the shop getting a notification and trying to get that message back. It's kind of, you know, yeah. Not the, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly right. Um, and if, if you guys can hang for another second, I am going to fire off a mirror of my, um, of my thing here. One second. Uh, I'm going to turn this on in the closing minutes to see if we can make this work. One second. I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to pop open um, one second. Let's see, sorry. I have to restart this. Ba, ba, ba. It's not doing it. Yeah, well, Jordan does that. I'm going to go ahead and answer Laura's question. Um, if anybody would like to set up a one on one, the best way to reach us would just be via email. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop both of our emails in a chat. And feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, email us both, maybe CC me, um, email to Jordan, and we'll coordinate a one-on-one uh, -on -one session, um, most likely remotely through Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am, um, go, sorry, go ahead. Later on, if anybody doesn't happen to have Jordan and Evan's contact info and you need it, you know how to reach the chamber, I can provide that. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, I do have one more quick question. Yeah. Um, would it be possible to have services and products once services are available? Yes. The answer okay. to that is yes. Great question. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, and there we go. I think. Um, um, looks like for a moment and then disappeared. Jordan. Yeah, it shut off. I don't know why it shut off. Um, sorry, guys. I'm going to try this one more time. The sharing um, sharing a connection uh, is not happy, um, so I apologize. But uh, we we had set up a few little test examples, um, uh, Mary Kay, with a few of your products. Uh, we had some bread shots and so forth. Um, but um, if you guys can use your imagination, close your eyes, and think of a five dollar bread item over at Mary Kay's shop there. Um, there, I think they're still there at the moment. <laughs> Anyway, well, hey, thank you guys all for coming. Um, and we're going to try to make sure we don't miss any of the questions as you guys hit us up for follow up. We're glad to help. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Um, our chamber chat next month is going to be about. It's called Chamber Energy Advisors, and it's a chamber benefit that can save businesses money on gas and electric bills. I know that a lot of Yellow Springs businesses aren't eligible to change their electric provider, but if you have gas, this might be useful to you. So join us on February 17th and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Salute.